On today's episode of Survival Dispatch Reviews, we're connecting the Goal Zero Yeti 6000X power station to their home integration kit to our main panel. The Goal Zero home integration kit allows us to connect four dedicated circuits or breakers from our main panel to this sub panel which in turn allows us to manually select whether we should feed those four circuits in our home from grid power or when the grid goes down, we flick the switch up and we can provide power off the Yeti 6000X power station. The Yeti 6000X has a 6000 watt hour NMC battery and is equipped with a 2000 watt continuous AC power output inverter. For ports, we've got 220 volt AC receptacles or sockets on the front. We have two USB A's, two USB C's. We have a 12 volt car port, two 12 volt barrel ports. We have an expansion port where we can daisy chain uh, the expansion module to this, so additional battery backup. And then we have inputs so that we can charge this, whether it be from AC power, or solar panels or a generator say in a grid down situation overall this package is really small for the specs one of the most important considerations when you're installing a, a power station for backup power with a home integration kit is that you got to keep this sucker charged up all the time so when the grid goes down you've actually got some reserve power so in this situation here, we don't have a receptacle anywhere close to keep the Yeti 6000 plugged in. So our first order of business is gonna to be to install a new receptacle in our power closet so we can keep the Yeti 6000X plugged in all the time and ready to go when the grid goes down. Just to be clear, when you open up your panel, uh, make sure that you have an electrician helping you, which is why we've got Zach here today. So the next step is, is we have to determine which four of these circuits we wanna be able to provide uh, backup power from the Yeti 6000X. So it's worth mentioning that the 6000X does not do 240 split phase. So all the 240 uh, breakers in here, you know, for the oven and whatnot, we can't tap into them or we can't back them up. So we're gonna choose uh, four circuits to keep our internet equipment up, our kitchen up and running, master bedroom, master bathroom. And that's the next step and let's get going. The first step to configuring the transfer switch is to remove the two inch square plate off the front and install the male receptacle. Then on the inside of the transfer switch, you have to connect it to the wiring for the breakers as well as the transfer switches up top. One little gotcha, these are pretty heavy duty 10 gauge wires and they do not fit into the uh, connector that came with them, it's called a WAGO connector. So instead Zach has stripped them and that's the WAGO connector, just the gauge is too large to fit in them. So Zach stripped a little bit of extra insulation from them and we're gonna connect them with wire nuts. The next step is to install the transfer switch or the home kit, sub panel, whatever you want to call it. You'll notice that Zach's dropped it four or five inches. Uh, we need that clearance for the apron or the lip around the cover for the main panel. But having this mounted will give Zach the ability 
to trace each one of the strands that's coming out of the bottom of the box and connect them to the appropriate breakers in the main panel. Okay, Zach, let's turn the transfer switches to the line setting first. Okay, so this basically means, go ahead and pop all four of them. This basically means that we're powering up from the grid. Go ahead, turn the breakers on in the transfer case. So now the power that's coming in from the grid is going through the breakers in the sub panel. All right, and now for the moment of truth, I'm standing so I can see all four areas that we're running through the transfer switch that'll have battery backup. Let's hit the first breaker, Zach. Right on, we've got power. Next one, looking good. We haven't blown our eyebrows off yet. <laughs> Go ahead. Yep, we got another one successful. And the last one successful, that's perfect. So let's get all this stuff cleaned up and we'll get the power station hooked up and then we'll do a quick test uh, running all four circuits off of battery power as well. Okay, Zach, so we've got the transfer switches all set to battery power, correct? Correct. Okay, we've got all the breakers on for the entire house, the main breakers, correct? Correct. Okay, are the breakers on on the transfer panel? Yes. Okay, so looking out of our room here, yep, it looks like we've got power going to everything. Are you seeing a load on the uh, 6000X now? Yes, 528 watts. Okay, so barely a quarter of what its output is. What's the battery at? Charge we're looking at 89%. So how long would we run at the current draw? Approximately 8.7 hours. Okay, cool. And once again, nobody burned their eyebrows off and we're still alive. All right, y'all. So first and foremost, want to remind everybody, if you're going to install this type of backup system, you want to make sure that you have an electrician doing all the hard work inside the panel. Uh, it's a little bit too dangerous for your average person like me to be doing. Thankfully, Zach came, saved the day, did all the hard stuff for us. You may notice that there's a man door right here, and that makes this a really uh, good location for us for both the panel and the Yeti 6000X because uh, we have extended grid down situations here in Florida during hurricane season. So in that case, we could run some of our portable solar panels from the outside into here to keep the Yeti 6000 kind of charged up. Probably looks like we'd have to run the generator maybe two or three times a day. We've got a propane generator. We've got a couple gas generators. The good news is you only have to run them for a short period of time, recharge the batteries in the Yeti. Then you've got peace and quiet. You're not burning up a bunch of gas. Gas is hard to get here when we have a hurricane. Uh, most of the gas stations get shut down. Anyway, uh, if you all are interested in a home backup system, this is pretty cool. It's the home kit from Goal Zero, the Yeti 6000X power station. And uh, thanks again for tuning in. If you could comment, like, and subscribe, really helps us with the algorithm. Thanks for following Survival Dispatch Reviews.